Hi everyone, today I have another video request and the question that I got from a lot of you is this Daniel, how do I share the gospel to unbelievers? And this question is very important because we are all called to share the gospel, the good news to the ends of the world. Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. When was the last time that you shared the gospel to someone? Be honest, think back. When was the last time? Do you even know how to share the gospel to different people? Are you ready to, to tell them when they ask you certain questions? If you are a true Christian, if you love Jesus Christ with all that you have, everything that He's done for you, the way that He changed you, it's impossible to keep all of that inside. You are the light of the world and you need to share the gospel. The Holy Spirit in you will help you. So it's time to listen to Him. It's time to learn how to share the gospel. The good news. This video is going to help you out. We're going to do a series. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Now, just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here on my channel, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth in a balanced way. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, I'm going to share with you the seven things that you must understand before you can share the gospel of Jesus Christ effectively. Let's start with the first one. The first one is know the Bible. You can't share the gospel if you don't know it, right? Makes sense. A while ago, I asked all of you on a community page, I asked you this question. How many times have you read through the entire Bible? 3% of you said more than 10 times. Another 3% said more than five times. 8% said more than two times. And 16% said only once. And a whopping 70% said zero, not even once. You know, that is why today so many Christians out there believe false prophets, false teachers, because they don't know God's word. You know, you can read through this in one year. We need to read and study God's word a lot more. How is it that we can study book after book at school, at a university, and read the news every day? things on Google every day, but we don't spend enough time with God's Word. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 says, Preach the Word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. And 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared, to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and respect. If someone asks you right now, Hey, I want to hear the gospel. I don't understand this. What is this all about? This Jesus that you keep talking about and the cross. Explain this to me. Will you be able to explain it to them? The gospel? Will it be biblically correct? Or will it just be some nice words for itching ears? Just to make them happy. Of course, we should share the gospel in love, right? But you can't sacrifice the truth to try and make it sound better. So of course, you should share the gospel in love. But if it's not also in truth, it's not going to change anything. Because only the truth can set people free. Jesus said in John 8 verse 31 to 32, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, there's a lot of churches out there, a lot of pastors and a lot of Christians who want to preach the gospel, but I don't preach the full gospel because they focus more on motivational messages, things that sounds good, that is more acceptable to people, to itching ears than focusing on sound doctrine. But Titus 2 verse 1 says, But as for you, 
teach what accords with sound doctrine. And Romans 16 verse 17 says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. Look, if you want to share the gospel, you can't change the Bible to fit in with modern times. No, you need to preach the gospel as it is. You need to preach God's word. Because if you don't preach God's word, it's your own words. Remember, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Did you hear that? That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So don't ever add things to the Bible or take things out of the Bible. Try to fit it in with today's world. Because if you do, then it's not God's word anymore. Only God's word can change people spiritually, show them the truth of their own soulful nature and the truth of God. Hebrews 4 verse 12 to 13 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Number two, pray. You got to remember, you are only the messenger. You only carry the message of the gospel. But it is God who changes people through you, through your words, through your lifestyle. Romans 10 verse 13 to 15 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Prayer is so important. That's how you talk to God. That's what, how He talks to you as well when you ask Him things. When you continually talk to Him about everything. And that includes sharing the gospel. So ask God to send you to the right people who desperately needs Him. Or ask Him to send the right people on your path who He wants you to talk to. You cannot share the gospel of Jesus Christ without the power of prayer. If you don't know what to say to someone, then just ask God. Pray. Ask for wisdom. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. When you came to Christ, you have faith in Christ. You trust in Him, right? For your salvation. And now, with your road of sanctification, now when you live for Him, when you grow spiritually, you also trust Him to help you with that, right? That's where your faith is. You trust in God for everything. And now you also need to trust and have faith in God to help you even with sharing the gospel. You can't do it without Him. The moment you became a reborn Christian, that's the moment when you walked into the school of Christ. You became a reborn Christian, a baby. In Christ and you need to learn how to grow spiritually how to follow Jesus you are his disciple Jesus says in Matthew 10 verse 38 whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me so how do you learn to share the gospel well as a disciple you learn from the master so you read his word day after day after day and you pray while you do it praying Reading His Word, praying, reading His Word, praying while reading His Word over and over every day. And then you grow spiritually. And then you learn how to trust God with everything in your life. And that includes how to share the gospel. You trust Him, you have faith in Him with no doubting. Remember, James 1 verse 5 says, 
If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But then, if you continue to read, it says, But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You know, the engine of any church, church organization, ministry, or Christian preacher, pastor, the engine should always be prayer. You can't do anything without continually talking to God. You can't start to share the gospel without talking to God. Always remember this, when men and women work, they just work. But when they pray, God works. Number three, through the Spirit. Well, you can try to share the gospel in your own flesh, your own emotions, intellect, and will. You can try to do it. Sometimes the fleshly nature will creep in there and you will even sin while doing it. You can try to do it, but it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change lives. It might make people a little bit emotional. It might be like, wow, okay, sounds interesting. But it's not going to change them. Why? Because it is only God that changed lives. And if you don't preach with the Spirit, with the power of the Spirit, you're just going to preach dead religion. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can change lives. Acts 1 verse 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, some of you might think, man, I don't think I'm good enough to share the gospel. And yes, you are just a human. I am also just a human. We make mistakes. We have sinful natures in us. But here's the thing. You are good enough, fully equipped, if you know God's word and if you do it in the spirit. You are never alone. By yourself, yes, you are not good enough. I am not good enough. But with God in us, we are. We are good enough to share the gospel. Because we don't do it by ourselves. We do it in the Spirit. He's the one that leads us, telling us what and when to say certain things to whoever cross our paths. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Him. Who strengthens me. Believe me when I tell you, God, God Almighty, if He told you to go and do something, He will give you what you need to accomplish His plan for your life. Not because of who you are, but because of who He is. It's all about God. All you need to do is you just need to be willing to say, all right, God, here I am. I am willing. Tell me, what do you what do you need me to do? Just like Isaiah. Isaiah 6 verse 8 says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Do you want God to use you? Are you willing? Every Christian should put on the armor of God, right? Right. But do you remember the shoes? What is it? Ephesians 6 verse 13 to 15 says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Here it comes. Listen up. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. You can't be ready to share the gospel if you don't live through the Spirit, if you don't walk with the Spirit, if you don't keep in step with the Spirit. Everything you do now as a reborn Christian, remember, you turn to God, you receive the Holy Spirit, and now you walk to be more and more like Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit in you, God's Spirit, will help you to do it. So everything you do now, even normal things, should be done in the Spirit. 
And yes, that includes sharing the gospel. Galatians 5 or 16 says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And verse 25 says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Look, a lot of Christians, they take this this heavy burden sometimes and they feel like, oh, I have to share the gospel, but I'm not good enough or I, I can't do it. For some reason, they have a lot of excuses. Sometimes, of course, yes, they're not fully equipped yet because they don't know the word of God. And sometimes they want to preach the gospel to someone, but the Holy Spirit in them might tell them, no, don't wait, go to someone else. There's a lot of things that you need to learn as a new Christian, but the Holy Spirit will help you to do it. He will help you to share the gospel. He is not called the helper for no reason. Jesus said of the Holy Spirit in John 16 verse 14, He will glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. So when you go and you talk to someone, you don't have to stress and, and think like, oh, what, what do I have to say? No, all you have to do is, all right, God, help me through the Spirit. Just lead me. Help me to say the right words. Help me to say what you want me to say to this person. The Spirit will remind you of God's Word. John 14 verse 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And this is what Jesus told his disciples and that's exactly what happened. When Jesus went away, the Holy Spirit came upon them on Pentecost. They went out. The Holy Spirit gave them power for ministry. And then what happened? They went and they shared the gospel to whoever they, 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 the Holy Spirit wanted them to share the gospel to. And they wrote the rest of the New Testament. And so even today, the Holy Spirit helps us to share the gospel to other people. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts the world, people of their sin. Jesus says in John 16 verse 7 to 8, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit will help you to share the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the personal witness that testifies about Jesus. Jesus says in John 15 verse 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. It is time you learn how to share the gospel in the Spirit, through the Spirit. That's how you share the gospel effectively. So far, I talked about one, knowing God's word, two, prayer, and three, through the Spirit. And in part two of this series, I'm going to talk about number four, building relationships, five, share on their level. Six, let go and let God. And then there's more, but you will have to wait and see. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it and also click that notification bell so you won't miss that video or any other videos that will come after it. Now, if you want to know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit for ministry, then please watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.